Hello and welcome to the Thursday, November 5th, 2020 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Cisco today released a patch for the AnyConnect Secure Mobility Client. And I think there's a tricky vulnerability to really come up uh, with a correct sort of severity rating and uh, how quickly you should patch this. The CVSS score is 7.3. So um, again, you're not super critical and Cisco rates it as high. Now, let me walk you through some of the pros and cons of why this may or may not be a real important or critical vulnerability for you. First of all, well, it is arbitrary code execution. So uh, that uh, definitely puts it up there. And uh, it's due to the IPC listener not requiring any authentication. However, to exploit this vulnerability, the attacker has to have credentials on the system for which it would the attacker would like uh, to exploit the vulnerability on. Uh, so that's a big uh, if here. And the victim needs to have an active mob mobility client connection going at the time of uh, the attack. And then there's this interesting requirement that you're only vulnerable if you have the auto update feature enabled. Uh, so actually disabling auto update is uh, provided here as a mitigation for uh, the vulnerability. So in some ways uh, you can say, hey, uh, if the user has auto update enabled, then they'll get the new version of the client. So uh, the vulnerability will be taken care of. And if they don't have auto update enabled, uh, then they're not uh, vulnerable. Oh yeah, but then again, on the sort of pro side, did I mention that exploit code is already publicly available? So really tricky one. And I think certainly something that you should attend to and make sure that your clients update if they have auto update enabled. I probably would advise against disabling auto update in this case. And this affects any connect secure mobility client on Linux, Mac OS and Windows. And Google's Chromium project announced that uh, they will change how Google Chrome gets its trusted certificate authorities. So far, Google Chrome has pretty much relied on the operating system. So if a certificate authority was uh, trusted by the operating system, Chrome trusted it too, and basically just use the operating system's trust store for that. That's going to change in that uh, Google Chrome will have its own separate uh, set of trusted certificate authority, the Chrome root program. And uh, well, now it will be up uh, to the Chromium project, which certificate authorities to include and not to include, which of course potentially could lead to certificate authorities that you used to have uh, marked as trusted, no longer uh, being trusted. The Chromium project did publish uh, this new policy earlier uh, this week, and they do speak towards the problem that uh, there may be some incompatibility, and they state that they would like to minimize these problems. So you should expect, at least initially, that uh, all certificate authorities that your operating system trusts are included in the Chrome root store. This new policy also states that the CA browser forums baseline requirements, which are currently used by the industry to uh, vet uh, certificate authorities are essentially what uh, Chromium is going to follow going forward. One potential problem is if you're adding your own trusted certificate authorities, for example, uh, for a TLS inspection. Now, uh, the document here states that if you manually added certificate authorities uh, to the operating systems trust store that uh, Chrome and Chromium will continue to trust those certificates. I did not see a specific timeline mentioned in this article, and there are some references to policies that will still be refined. 
And for Android users, uh, the November update was released uh, this week. So probably want to take a look and update your phone if possible. Of course, as usual with Android, you may have to wait for a specific update from your carrier or handset vendor. Nothing really outrageous here that uh, requires special treatment. Uh, yes, uh, there are as usual a critical remote code execution vulnerability in the media framework. Uh, that's pretty much uh, common each month and uh, also one in a system, but uh, no exploit code available as far as I'm aware of. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow.